Hello friends, my colleagues, my juniors and my professors. Welcome back to our next session of uh, training for emergency neurosurgical techniques. In our previous session, we have discussed regarding uh, evacuation of lateral, frontal and temporal contusions by modified tyrional technique. You can consider this as a continuation of the previous ses session. Here we'll be discussing regarding evacuation of frontal contusions by bifrontal technique. That this is more appropriate for frontal contusion, which are located on the medial part of the frontal MSP. Let me introduce my, myself. I'm Dr. Kalyan. I'm a neurosurgeon and spine surgeon from Global Glenagel Hospital, Hyderabad. So let me start sharing my session. So this session is for surgery for cerebral contusions of the medial frontal lobe the lateral frontal and the temporal lobes, including temporal lobe resection, we have discussed in our previous session. Here we'll be discussing from middle frontal lobe and the frontal lobe resection if required. Yeah, the indications we have discussed in the previous session, but let me uh, be very quick enough. So a frontal or temporal contusion of greater than 20 cc in volume associated with any of this following. Glasgow coma scale of less than eight, a midline shift of at least five mm, cisternal compression seen on CT scan of brain, or any lesion, any frontal lesion greater than 50 cc in volume, or a parenchymal mass lesion irrespective of the volume, if it is causing progressive neurological decline, are refractory intracranial hypertension or mass effect are seen on the CT scan of brain. So this contusion can be evacuated either by the bifrontal technique or even by the modified tyrional technique. This session will be discussing about the medial frontal techniques, medial frontal contusions which are approached by bicoronal technique. So as I've told in my previous session, so two, two different approaches, the bicoronal and the modified tyrenal approach. Bicoronal approach is for medial frontal contusions. For medial frontal contusions. And the modified tyrenal approach is for the lateral frontal and the temporal contusions. So coming to the operative position, we fix the head, we for even in my institute, even my in my personal experience, if I'm planning for a bicoronal technique, I'll, I will prefer rigid immobilization in a three pin headrest. But sometimes, if you have to save time, you can position it on a horseshoe headrest. I keep the head neutral in the midline. We slightly elevate the head and up so that it is above the heart level. This ensures adequate venous return and this decreases the swelling of the brain and also decreases the amount of bleeding venous ooze in the brain. We, we take a bicoronal skin incision. The skin incision starts from the zygomatic arch on one side, in at least one centimeter in front of the tracheus. Then it goes along the midline, along just behind the hairline, reaches the midline, and in, then it mirrors back to the opposite side. I use a 10, 11, 15 blade, 15 number surgical blade to incise the skin up till the level of the pericranium above the superficial temporal line. And below the superficial temporal line, I take down the skin incision up till the level of the temporalis fascia. Once I elevate, once I reach that one, I use a combination of periosteal elevator, 
blunt dissectors and elevate the pericranial flap. We take every effort to take the pericranial uh, to keep the pericranial flap intact without any holes. If there is a small hole, I suture it back. So this is the pericranial flap which are elevated. Similarly, I cut the temporalis muscle at the posterior extent of my incision and also detach the temporalis muscle from the superior temporal line on either side and then reflect the temporalis muscle antero-inferiorly and hold it with fish hooks like this. Whenever I reflect a flap, either the skin flap or the pericranial flap or the temporalis flap, I use gauze rolls so that the reflection is not actually kinking the blood supply. Now coming to the burrows. The first burrow is placed at the root of the zygoma, at the posterior root of the zygoma. The second burrow is the key burrow. Third one, the third burrow is placed in front of the coronal suture just over the superior temporal line. These two midline burrows are placed as close to the midline as possible, straddling the midline. When you're placing these four burrows, when you're placing these posterior burrows, be very careful so that you are not functioning into the dura mater, which may be catastrophic and which may injure the superior sagittal sinus. These two burrows may enter into the frontal sinus. If they enter into the frontal sinus, immediately pack the, immediately remove the mucosa from the frontal sinuses and pack the frontal sinuses with either with muscle or fat or, and also with betadine soaked abjel. All the instruments which have entered into this part of the frontal sinus, discard them and, you, and start using new set of instruments. So you have placed the burrows on either side. The last burrows to be placed are the midline burrows, midline, midline burrows. Then using a, a pen field dissector, separate the dura matter at the level of the burrows and also beyond the burrows as far as possible. When you are separating the dura matter in between these two paramedian burrows, you should be very careful because if you are if the dissector enters into the superior sagittal sinus it may cause terrible bleeding catastrophic bleeding so there are two techniques some people try to dissect it with a benfield dissector the way it's shown over here gently until from one burrow you go into the opposite side other people use a, uh, use a cutting bar followed by diamond bar to make this barrel paper thin. Or once you make it paper thin, use a dissector or a 1 mm up cut to join the both barrels. This part of the procedure is done last only after connecting all the barrels with the craniotome. So once you have connected with the craniotome, followed by connecting the two paramedian by rules. You have closed the exteriorized the frontal sinus, then reflect the bone flap back. Then reflect the bone flap back. At this point, if you have opened the frontal sinus, I prefer to place a small, a small flap of galia over it. That is, I will exteriorize the sinus at this point. Now, cutting the suprasagittal sinus, you can flap both the on either side with the flap based on the midline. That, this is the midline, which is the flap. I'm opening the dura on either side and reflecting it medial. But many a times, cutting the superior sagittal sinus and releasing it anteriorly will, will release pressure on the frontal lobe. So this technique is a bit demanding. So how do you do it? You take, you take dural slits on either side, paramedially on either side, paramedially 
on either side of the superior sagittal sinus. This one is a superior sagittal sinus in the picture. You take dural, dural slits on either side of the superior sagittal sinus as low as possible near the crystal gallery. Once I open it, now comes a double ligature of the superior sagittal sinus. I take a needle through and through the park cerebrae, take it across, ligate it thoroughly. I take a second ligature and then cut the superior sagittal sinus between the two ligatures. These ligatures should not slip. You can take a double ligature if required. So this completes my reflection of the dura matter. Now coming to the evacuation of the contusion, this is similar to the evacuation of the evacuation of the temporal contusion in my previous session. So for people who, are, who have not attended my previous session, I request them to go back to my previous session in my YouTube channel. They have clearly explained how to remove a contusion. It involves first one identification of the contusion, cauterization of the superficial a pile surface in the sub pile plane reach the reach the temporal contusion then evacuate the liquid and solid components of the contusion achieve hemostasis now if the frontal lobe is severely damaged then we we may plan for evacuate frontal lobectomy so how do you achieve a frontal lobectomy the margin of resection will depend on the size and appearance of the contused frontal lobe. Alternatively, if the contusion is diffuse, one may begin the cortical incision seven to eight centimeter from the frontal pore and extend laterally to the level of, level of the lesser wing of the sphenoid. And the medial aspect of the cortical, cortical incision should be made where the frontal lobes are clearly separate. So once I achieve the hemostasis, the next steps are similar to my previous session. You decide whether you want to do a primary duroplasty or an expansor duroplasty or just tack up sutures augmented with abjel. You decide whether you are going to replace the bone flap or preserve the bone flap elsewhere. Achieve hemostasis, place a closed suction ring and close the skin in layers. If you have any other doubts, all my chapters, all my explanations are from this particular book, The Atlas of Emergency Neurosurgery by Dr. Jamie Ullman and Dr. Raksit. So if you have any other doubts, you can refer back to the book. And so this concludes my session. Again, in our next session, we will come with one more emergency operative neurosurgery techniques. Kindly share, share this videos with your colleagues, with your juniors, with, with your professors, they can so that they can give us more inputs and how to improve these techniques. These techniques are life-saving and these are going to save lives of a lot of our patients. Do subscribe my channel and come back soon. We'll, we'll meet again in our next session. Thanking you, Dr. Kalyan from Glenigals Global Hospital, Hyderabad.